Hello, my name is Jay, and today I'm going to teach you guys how to make a cardboard box PC case. Now, this is do-it-yourself. We're going to be teaching you the general gist. As for parts, you can choose whatever you want. This is what I would recommend for people that are really just trying to save a lot of money on a case. As I said, though, you are going to need still two case fans, or these are just regular um, case fans that you plug into the motherboard. Um, simply for the fact that cases need to have airflow circulation in order to um, get to keep CPU cool, graphics card cool, things like that. So you're going to need at least two of them to make sure air circulates really well throughout the case. Now the next thing I have is just a regular screwdriver. I'm trying to keep it pretty simple than what we're going to use. It's just going to take a little bit of work to um, knead out the uh, spots that we want to. We're just going to basically using a regular screwdriver for that. As for the parts, this is all these parts you see right here were under 50 bucks for me. Um, obviously, if you're trying to save money and try to keep like a sub $50 budget range um, while still being able to game on it, this is what I recommend. This is equivalent to pretty much a GTX 1050, which is a really good card. Um, it's around 100 bucks ish, and this is what it's equivalent to, slightly less. But this is a GTX 660. I have a CD reader because you probably might need one of those. Those you can get for 10 bucks if you're online, brand new, or you can find some um, used. This is all these parts I got from a used computer. Some of these I did. This one I got from the yard sale, and a couple other things I got this from the other computer. Lots of different assortment of parts. But basically, the main general idea what I'm trying to teach you guys here today is how to build a cardboard box PC. So the first thing we're going to do is pretty much you want to lay out where all your parts are going to be and how you're going to have everything situated. So I'm going to go through and just move everything to the side real quick. And the other thing I want to say is I do have the, uh, I don't know, IO shield because I want to make sure that I can actually put this in the uh, carbon box case to keep it kind of gener ger generally thin and you know make sure everything lines up nice and pretty. Because you know that doesn't look too pretty if you look at that, the IO doesn't look too pretty. Just you know plain. Okay, so the next thing I want to say also is I chose a really kind of thin box design. Now, obviously, you're thinking, oh, well, why would you choose a thin box? Well, you could use a bigger box. This, will, this idea will still work generally for what you're going to do. The reason why I chose a thin box is because this is one of those boxes we can put up like this, sideways, things like that. I think I'm going to have the I.O. on the side, on the back right here. And I think I'm going to have a, couple, a case fan here and a case fan there um, to keep the airflow going throughout the case. Now, the reason why I chose, as I said, a thin box is because sometimes, especially for people that are, I don't know, maybe perhaps you're out there and you want to fit this in a tight spot, maybe you know you're trying to build this at home, something like that. This is mostly a tutorial for you guys to do that. So let's just move everything to the side real quick and let's get into it. So first off, I want to start off by opening the sucker up. So we look at this, we've got a nice kind of clean canvas to figure out how we want to organize things. Now, this is a lot of space, and this is kind of good because this is a kind of thin design that will fit in a lot of places. You could use it as a DVR box. It's about the size of a DVR box. You can basically set that up. So the first thing I want to do is I want to choose the motherboard casing or get the motherboard set down. Now, obviously, this box itself could probably fit a full ATX size. I know this is a micro ATX. Um, so this will basically fit there. That's where I'm thinking about putting it right now unless we have something else. Um, looks like the hard drive. We might, I think we'll even fit right there, so we'll get lucky there. Um, you're just trying to generally put the parts in. Now, obviously, this is planning. You, mean, you could hop right into it if you have a really good idea. But the other thing is, this case really does require... Sometimes you're going to actually have to end up breaking stuff out of the case to figure out where you're going to need to put it. So, obviously, you can see right here, we're going to need to end up cutting a little bit of this right here to get enough room for the graphics card to sit and also not have, you know, the sound of, you know, it whining as it tries to get in there. But the good thing is this graphics card will be a little... Um, um, we'll be locked in there. The other thing is, it will keep it secure if you leave it upright that you won't have to worry about, you know, let's see if I can put that down there. You won't have to worry about it moving too much as well. So, I'm just going to like gently put that in there. It's not really in there yet. The IO shield will actually put in there. We'll measure that and we'll get that lined up. The other thing I want to say is keep in mind case fans because you do want to have a case fan at least over the CPU. So, I'm going to end up probably putting the case fan somewhere on here and probably cutting a hole like that. Keep to make sure that the you know keeps it cool and puts it right over the CPU and push the air out. Also, you got to keep in mind there's a CPU fan on the actual um, uh, graphics card. So once you've done that, you basically have kind of a general idea of what you want to do. You got the graphics card kind of set in there. As I said, not really you know in a firm position, but you've got it in like you know you have a general idea of what you want to do with it. I don't say that's ready to go just yet. So the other thing we have is the CD reader. Now, depending on how you want to have this set up and where you want to put this, you might not want to have the CD reader in a different place, depending on just, just thinking about though, since the front of the case, we're kind of making it this direction. I'm thinking we're going to end up putting the, hmm, 
thinking about this actually it's just trying to figure out how we're going to design this so everything fits so the first thing I see though is that this needs to have I'm thinking about putting the power supply for a matter of fact back here but it's got a lot of cables um, I know the hard, I want this in the front really bad but I don't know if we're going to be able to do that or not so thinking about it now the case is all the IO on the front and I'm thinking we're going to make maybe do it on the side like that and see if we can get the hard drive in there doesn't look like that so I'm thinking with that said I think we're going to lose all kind of general direction that we're going for and just kind of mount that in there and then we've got room for the power supply which looks like we're going to have to just cut a hole in or maybe not just like we luck out this is not a f uh, modular whatsoever. This is just going to mean that we're going to have to put these cords throughout the whole box. I mean, it does look like pretty much like a mess right now. But keep in mind that we are kind of going through and trying to get a general gist of what we're doing. Uh, keep in mind, though, that there's going to need to be a little bit cable management, things like that. But in the general idea, if you shut everything and close everything, you're basically looking at a case that uh, looks like we might need to cut this. We're, of course, going to need to cut a hole for the power supply. But the other thing to keep in mind is this power supply outputs here. So it looks like we're going to have to cut some holes on this side of the box back here because the power supply was there in here and then pulls it out here. Because if you don't do this, then it's really dangerous because your power supply can get in the bad situation as well. So you've got one input fan here. This actually pushes some air out here as well. So I'm thinking if we have one output fan here and maybe another output or input. Maybe you could do two input fans here. One for the graphics card and one for the... Um, uh, CPU and then you left some uh, air holes at the front or the back you'd probably be doing pretty good you could probably put a couple around the whole box as well okay so we've got the idea of what we're doing now I'm actually gonna stand up and actually get into this so you gotta look at what you're get what you're doing I'm gonna still tilt the box this way a little bit you can see what we got here so you got all your parts laid out now you got know what you're doing so the first thing the biggest concern for me is what I'm worried about is actually getting this motherboard cut out it's got to get cut out right here and we've got to get the heat shield lined up, or the IO shield lined up right there. So, I mean, it's obviously not going to look like that. It's going to look, you know, just gives you guys a little better view. Look like that kind of. So, that's what we're kind of going to punch out first. Now, I'm going to take out everything, push my chair back a little bit, and just start lining stuff up over here so we don't need to worry about this. And we can start looking at worrying about the motherboard first because that's the biggest thing I want to make sure it gets done. So. There we go. Now, I've got a general idea of where the thing is going to go. I'm actually going to pop this in here and just check real quick first. So, the IO shield goes like this. And so, you just want to kind of line it up in there and figure out where you're going to go for. Now, it really doesn't matter as long as the fact that, you know, i got to find my little tool. Where did my tool go? Find my, here we go. And basically, I'm just going to punch some holes in the edges so that way I can cut it and have a general idea. So it looks like just punch a couple holes there. Just, just gonna punch some holes. And obviously I'm not gonna punch a whole lot, but keep in mind that this is you're trying to keep within a general area. So you got some holes lined up and work through those. Hopefully don't stab my finger. And there you go, we've got a hole through there. You're just going to line up the holes on the I.O. Figuring out where you want to have it. I'm going to move the motherboard out so I don't damage that while I'm working on the box. But basically you can see we've got a hole there. And I'm just going to start working on the box and getting the holes punched out for the I.O. shield. Lining that up on the side right there. Inside the box right there. And basically you just got to keep it generally straight. And then we'll get through and take a knife and cut through there. So then
And there we go. There is the fully working cardboard box PC, which uh, I will say is pretty uh, pretty interesting. There you go. Fully working cardboard box PC with all included nice sideways. Um, it's got a graphics card. Everything you'll need and it will boot up. I'm not. It, I know it boots up. Uh, I'm not even gonna test that. More, main goal of this was just to show, go through, and show you that this is what we're kind of going for. And good news is, uh, airflow we got out of here. Got plenty of airflow out of here. Fans got plenty of intake. Lots of airflow in here. Lots of airflow in here. Actually, yeah, yeah, I got a good bit of airflow actually. And this vacuum's in. Got a lot of airflow coming out here. We're good. So we got all the airflow we wanted. And now I might cut off the end tab over here. That's what you're looking at right there, guys. For the computer case. Let me see if I can zoom out with the camera a slight bit. And that is what you call a fully working cardboard box computer case. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you guys give it a thumbs up. Um, I mean, it doesn't look the best, but I'm sure with some tape, a couple other things, you'll be able to get this looking pretty nice as well. Of course, you wrap it up, put some wrapping paper over it, and you would pretty much have something that you wouldn't even be able to tell any difference of. It is basically getting the sturdy designs, which you're looking for. And this is actually pretty sturdy, too. I can lift it up, move it all around. No issues whatsoever. If you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. Hope you guys did enjoy it. And, um, yeah, that's what you're looking at right there. Got a couple of cuts, plenty of airflow. Feels really good. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you all for watching, and uh, goodbye.